Hi, welcome to Subdivision TV. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm Kenny Johnston. I'm the Alliance Manager for uh, Rackspace's relationship with Intel called OSIC. And I'm Rocky Grober, also known as Rochelle Grober. I am a Senior Cloud Technologist for Huawei. Well, thank you for joining us. So today we'll be discussing rolling upgrades. And so I guess the first question that's probably on everyone's mind is, what's new with rolling upgrades in OpenStack? Yeah, so in the Mataka release, uh, a number of new projects applied for, or are in the process of applying for the rolling upgrades tag, which uh, is essentially a way of doing interest service upgrade without it uh, requiring the whole service to be pulled down uh, and a database migration to happen and then brought back up. So some of those projects are, uh, for example, Cinder and Salometer, I think, are new. Uh, and they're in addition to Swift and Nova, which have had the tag in the past. Now, one of the questions I would ask is, there are all these projects, and they operate in different modes. Is there a standard place to go to find out, besides the tag, how to actually make them work properly in your environment? Yeah, so there are things like the release notes have upgrade notes nowadays that uh, include the specific instructions that you should take for upgrading a given service. Um, and in addition, you know, the, the tag is sometimes hard to find, but I would just mention that the tag is available in the project navigator on openstack.org, which can, which can give you a list of which projects are capable of performing these interest service rolling upgrades. Wonderful. Great. So what are some of the biggest challenges right now uh, with rolling upgrades? So I would say, you know, I kind of view the, the struggle that many operators have with rolling upgrades as a real threat to the innovation platform that is OpenStack. You know, part of the value of OpenStack is that it's constantly evolving and there's new innovation being added to it every release. And when people struggle with um, upgrading, it causes a lag in people not to get it, take advantage of that. It also hurts our feedback cycle. You know, one of the graphics of OpenStack is that we have users and operators, or developers in the community and operators really um, working closely together. And then when you have operators who are many releases behind because of the pains of upgrading, it's really hard for that feedback cycle to really take effect. Um, so we've been, we've been working to uh, improve rolling upgrades with that really kind of specific, it's a, it's a really big component that will help improve the adoption of OpenStack. So I want to come back to what we really mean by rolling upgrade intra project. And how does, what, what does that really mean for the operator? Does that mean that you don't have to shut down the entire service? And do you have co-resident multiple versions? Or how yeah, does that work? It's important to know, you know, rolling upgrades can mean a lot of different things. We're talking about interest service, so within a given service. The typical anecdote that you would hear in the past was that for uh, operators who had deployed Nova, when they uh, were upgrading Nova, they would have to do things like bring down all the Nova services, perform a uh, potentially very long database migration, which could in some cases last not just hours but days, uh, and then bring all those services back up in a specific order in, at the new version. Uh, so interest service rolling upgrades means that, just like you said, Rocky, as you, uh, as you upgrade, you can upgrade specific sub-services of a project or module. Uh, in a, there's a sequence that's kind of given to, to perform this, but it allows the different versions of the same service to talk to each other. Um, so a lot of it has to do with interoperability. Uh, some projects have, um, have also added a component of uh, what we call online schema migration or online database migration, so that it's not an expensive one-time database migration for your existing data to upgrade to a new version, and it, that it can happen over the course of actually your deployment time in a given version. So that indeed sounds like a lot of progress, so congratulations on you know, making a lot of improvements and rolling upgrades. You, you mentioned continued improvement going forward. So what's next? Well, so I think that um, there are still a number of projects that do not support rolling upgrades. Critical ones like Neutron, I know, are working on it in this cycle, as well as I think Cinder will, will receive the tag this cycle. Um, we're expecting work in Glance and uh, some other of the core projects to complete this cycle so that we can say, at least amongst most of the core projects, we can do uh, Intra service rolling upgrade. I think there are lots of, there's continued room for how we orchestrate upgrades so that um, you don't necessarily have to go through every single one of the um, release notes and follow those prescriptions exactly, that there are some of the deployment and lifecycle management uh, projects take advantage of what's been done in rolling upgrades and make that more seamless for operators. So I, I think 
Uh, I, will, I will point out that uh, in the recent user survey, we've started to see a definite trend towards uh, users and operators deploying or running more recent versions. In the past, we seem to see a multiple uh, release delay. And now we're starting to see people be closer and closer to the current stable release, which is, which is great and shows that the work we're, we've been doing, the whole community has been doing around rolling upgrades has been, has been really beneficial. Now I have one more question. Operators, we've, we've covered how they actually uh, will be affected by this. What will the operators be able to tell their users how, how this might improve the end user experience? Yeah, I mean, from a very practical perspective, it means that my as an operator, I don't have to tell my end users that their infrastructure platform will be down for hours or days, that hopefully uh, their control plane can be always available. It certainly is more available with services like rolling upgrades. <clears throat> In addition, because the operators uh, have to experience less pain to upgrade, it means that they're deploying and providing their users with the newest features of OpenStack more quickly, which, you know, like I said, is, is part of that innovation engine that, that they get the advantage of all the work that the community does on a regular basis uh, in their actual operational clouds quicker. That's great. great. So one last question. Is rolling upgrades purely a software solution? Like, is there only software changes that are needed to achieve rolling upgrades? As an operator, you always have to do things like roll in new hardware, fix broken hardware, and plan for changes within your hardware architecture. And so rolling upgrades also provides a way to, uh, in some ways, mitigate some of the pains with that. But there are hardware upgrades. The, the classic one that both users and operators see is if there is a host that has a problem. And that requires that the instances that the user owns and sees have to be migrated off, which would in involve live migration. Another topic we, that folks are really big on, and we'll, but not covered here. And then the, uh, once the instances are off, the operator can actually bring up the, uh, take down the host and, uh, and fix it and then bring it back up and the whole upgrade process makes it a lot easier to make sure that it's still in line with everything else. And then it can be used again for, for instances. Great, well thank you for bringing us up to speed on rolling upgrades and have a great summit. Thanks, Shabam. Thanks. Thanks, Rocky. Thanks. <laughs>